Hello everybody, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. Thank you so much for choosing to spend some time with me as I share with you my creative process. I hope you really enjoyed the introduction to these three little pieces of art that I'm going to share with you. My video is going to be broken up into three main stages. One being the first part, which will be creating what was a piece of art that didn't work out that ended up being a great base layer. You'll see a second layer of resin, which is the piece of art that you saw at the beginning. The third stage will be embellishment. So I am going to try and make sure I put um, little notices at these three stages so that you can skip forward to the parts that you're interested in and um, which should make it a little bit more efficient for you all. Also, the people that do want to understand my thought process and creative journey get to hear that a little bit more because that's the feedback that I've been getting that you'll find that this add values to you. I also want to take this time to thank you for everybody that is uh, continuing to subscribe to me. We've hit 3,000 so I'm super super proud and happy of that so thank you all for your support and your interactions so have an amazing day and enjoy the video. Hello welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. I am going to be working on a nice, hopefully bright piece, which is inspired from when I went to see the stage show Aladdin with my Neil. So the colours I have in mind that I want to work with are brown, orange, gold. They're my three main colours, uh, but there'll be a hint of purple and possibly yellow in there with a little bit of resin blast, but we'll see. So I'm going to be using Colour Cottage Pigment and this one is the Coffee, Coffee Bean Brown. Beautiful, dense uh, colour. So I'm hoping that that's going to be sort of the hero that is going to complement the Autumn Gold. It's more of the uh, dark gold, which I really love. And the Sopery, which is the Sunset Orange. So they're going to be the main colours. And then I'm thinking I might, oh, you don't want to do that, embellish with a little bit of the Dandelion Yellow. Might be a little bit at the top. And a little bit of Heather Glen. So the reason I have, oh, <laughs> see the way that just popped itself. That's why you wear a dust mask. So the reason I have painted my board purple is I'm going to be experimenting with pushing some resin. So I'm in my mind's eye thinking that I may have some clear resin so that the purple will come through. But also if the resin pulls inwards, uh, if the colour purple shows through, it's going to complement the colours. But I'm thinking that, I don't know what I'm thinking. I know that I probably just want to um, layer it, which would be uh, brown gold, orange, maybe a little bit of yellow. Now I'm going to push some of it up and see if that gives you any kind of feeling of warmth or interest. And then maybe just add a little bit of embellishment with the Heather Glen and the Dandelion Yellow and a tiny little bit of Resi Blast. So that's what I'm thinking. And I just want to see if I can do justice to some of the colours that came in the show. And I've purchased myself this silicone scraper. So the idea is if I push this up what will happen to the resins and what effects will I will I get so it might be something it might be nothing so come on this journey with me I have taped my board underneath you saw that I've applied two coats of acrylic which is now uh, dry I've got my dust mask and gloves I've got a spare board here at the side my old faithful one this time I'm determined because I need only 150 mil for this but um, I'm going to mix 200 and put the rest on here. That one I'm just going to dump all my spare colours on uh, and see what comes out of that and what gets created. And I'm just going to get on with it now. So um, I'm not too sure whether I will speed through this for you or give you commentary as I'm discovering this, but I'll just let it play out. And if I immerse myself into the creative zone and I don't add any value with what I'm saying, I'll just fast forward it for you and tell you about my findings at the end. So off I go to make my resin. So I'm currently using Mastercast one-to-one -one and I am mixing up 
200 mils. 150 for my board and 50 for the piece that's just at the side. So I'm applying the clear um, throughout this process because you can find that it helps your resin uh, run smoother create some beautiful nice effects and you can always get depth in there so if you've not tried resin before try adding a little bit of clear resin and then try some pieces of out without it and then you'll see that it adds different values to your work and you get some nice dimensions in there and I heat up my clear resin to try and remove some of the bubbles also if you warm up your resin because it's starting to get a little bit colder over in the UK it can be quite thick if you can get some heat in there when you do apply your colours, what you'll find is that'll blend a lot more. So at this point, I really don't know what I'm doing. Um, I just know that I've seen this wonderful lady called Kathy Lane, and I'll talk to you about her before. She just mesmerises me where she pushes her boundaries in resin. So that's Kathy Lane, C-A-T-H-Y-L-A-N-E. And she does this beautiful movement of pushing the resin up and then letting it spill back on itself to get some effect. So I'm being inspired by the bright colours at uh, the musical Aladdin, and I'm also being inspired by the journey I'm on currently with uh, pushing my resin art. Also, when I saw Kathy Lane, I didn't want to copy her. But I wanted to just have a go at using her technique because the more you practice and learn the medium you're working in, more results you're going to get through that so as it, as it evolves shortly you'll see me pushing it up and that's the technique that Kathy Lane uses as you'll see the little board to the right side I usually always keep a spare one so the excess colour I can put on there in a colour scheme that I think is going to work just leave that to settle down then right at the end I'll come and create some art but it's a hot tip Always keep a little board to the side. Sometimes you create some amazing work that you didn't expect. So as you can see here, I'm about to use the technique. So I've kept this one in normal time, just so you can see what I'm doing. And I'm slowly scraping the resin from the bottom and pushing it up. I probably took this one a bit too far and maybe should have just left it the other one. But because I'm only experimenting with the technique, I wanted to repeat this process. But uh, as Kathy Lane says, you have to have patience at this stage because it will fall back on itself and it will fill in. I'm now attempting it on some others and just trying to get a feeling for what it does. But again, you can overwork it, uh, which is exactly what I did. And this is why I then evolved this piece of art. If I could go back in time, I would have stopped it just about there because it looked beautiful. But as you can see, it's starting to slip over the sides. And in my head, I'm thinking, OK, this is not my technique, so I'm not really bonded with it. Um, there's internal battles as to should I just scrape it off? Should I start again? But me, I never like to give up until I'm singing and I ain't singing at the minute. Uh, so I just try and incorporate my own techniques and see if I could salvage it. And at one point, I actually did think I'd salvaged it and I ended up with an image that I was super proud of. But because I'd added the resin blast and the colours that were used and how they were, um, it all flattened. There wasn't a lot of texture and the colours became just one uh, colour which I believe created a beautiful 
pace uh, and hence the piece that we've got now uh, but it definitely wasn't pleasing to the eye the next day so I definitely would like to experiment a little bit more and put my own spin on this because I don't want to um, take somebody's um, process but I do enjoy the uh, inspiration that she's given me about shoving your resin and moving it and then letting it pull back and different way of blending and mixing so I'd love to know your thoughts I'd love to know if you've ever tried anything like this and what results have you had because sometimes through our willing to experiment and failing uh, we come up with some pretty pretty good inspiration and pieces of art As you can see towards the end, I'm bringing in some of my own techniques and creating some interesting effects. But I think at this point, um, I'm still liking it. I don't know if it was the paint fumes, but I can see where it's going. But I think it's safe to say it doesn't represent anything to do with Aladdin other than the colours that I saw there. But who knows? Let's see if I go back and work with these colours, if I can make it work next time. So I have just finished working on these two pieces. I'm not too sure if in the unnatural light you're going to be able to see the effects and the colours. But I started at the top left, working my way down, across and up. And across to the little baby one. So let's see how these dry in the morning. This definitely is not what I had in mind, but I did have fun playing and trying a new technique and then moving on until I got this piece. So I'm hoping that when it dries in the morning, it's not going to look muddy. The colours are going to be defined and there's going to be lots of texture in there and those colours really do pop. But it does remind me of all the colours that were on that stage show. And it does remind me of how they all popped. And I could imagine this garden being on the stage of Aladdin. So let's see what they dry like in the morning. And fingers crossed, so have an amazing evening. I'll see you on the other side of curing. Hi, welcome back to Sharon from Vivid Days. I'm gonna come back and rework this. This is now gonna be used as a base. So you would have seen from the video that I just did before, which was last night in my time frame, where I tried this new technique and I'm quite interested to keep exploring this new technique. However, I didn't get it right. It's the first time I've tried it and I can see the potentials and the colours potentially I used or the amount that I was trying to do with it to start with just caused it all to muddy and um, I left with what I thought was a quite a nice vivid piece last night. I don't know if I was a little bit out there with the paint fumes. <laughs> anyway, overnight as it's cured, it's cured quite flat and quite muddy but there is a really nice base coat that I'm going to be using so I'll tilt it up and show you. So I'm not too sure if the light is going to get you. So there's some beautiful gold and orange and a little bit of deep brown in there. But what I am going to do is use that as a base and use some contrasting colours to help. And the same with this one. So this had, uh, again, just bled together and didn't really give a, 
a image that I'm really happy with. So yes, I do make mud and yes, I do make uh, mistakes, but that's what you do. You put yourself out there, you learn, you work with different colors and you've got to be willing to keep giving it a go. So the complementing colors I'm going to be using is two blues, a purple, and a brown so hopefully that should work really well so what in my mind's eye i am thinking of is creating some flowers on top of this but not filling the whole board um with resin so i'm trying to work out do i do that as a clear and just add my pattern in or do i just leave them by themselves standing alone so they're slightly raised so not too sure so it is the color cottage pigments that i'm going to be working with uh, so I've got the light blue to contrast with the gold, the dark blue to contrast with the orange, the purple to help complement the orange and the purple that's down there and the brown for this bottom part here. So I envisage um, three big flowers with a difference in the middle. So with the um, blue bird blue, that's the very light one. Beautiful colour. But I might use that more sparingly than the dark because I think the dark blue will complement more where the, the orange is as opposed to the gold. And then the purple and orange just really go well together uh, and it's very near on the scale with the blues, dark blue, dark purple that will complement the dark orange. And then potentially a little bit of this brown. So that's all I know I'm going to work with, these colours. And hopefully... <laughs> The base will not all be covered up and it will just so complement these colours that I'm going to be using. Now my nemesis, which is Resi Blast, which I have a love-hate relationship with. I love it because when it's used properly, it creates the most amazing effects and it's beautiful to work with. What I hate about it is if I'm lazy and I don't clean my surface correctly, the residue of the Resi Blast will raise up and it'll create cells. So my first stage has been to, I've cleaned up my work area a little bit. I've made sure that the boards are going to be level. I am now going to give them a big wipe down with the alcoholic wipes. And although the resin was only resin was only just put down yesterday, which means the Mastercast should cling to it really nicely and grip to it, I'm still just going to give it a light sand. Uh, that's just to help me, but I, I have heard that you don't need to do that, but I just don't want to mess up this process. So I will be using uh, 200 mils of uh, resin. 150 will be used on this, 50 on that. And I may have even got too much because considering I may not want to put um, the whole board full of resin, um, I'm just gonna think this through. And if I do have any left over between A and B, I will make sure that I've got a spare board nearby and I'll apply that. And I hope that the glare from the sun that's coming through here isn't too bright and you're going to be able to see so i've adjusted my camera angle slightly because i'm constantly trying to get a better view for you people so you can see the colors because as i'm mixing them i'm not really good at showing the vibrancy of these colors uh, that i'm working with so i'm not going to play any music in the background therefore if i do want to tell you what i'm doing or talk out loud hopefully that will add value to you but other than that i'll try and fast forward as much as possible because i know time's precious for everybody but hopefully you will learn along the way. So let's get to this and let's have a go at creating some amazing art. As you can see, I'm using my alcohol wipes. This is because my nemesis, Resi Blast, was used on the first layer. So I am making sure that this is well and truly wiped clean and I even lightly sanded it just to make sure it's got a chance for gripping. The resin I'll be using is still Mastercast one to one, and it'll be the same measurements as before, which was 200 mils in total, 150 for the main piece, and 50 for the limb piece. So I'm pleased to say the resin blast did not cause me any issues this time. that juicy colour there. Yum yum. So 
So I'm going to place him here. And I'm just going to leave that as it is, let it settle down. Now I'm going to go to my purple, which is Heather Glen. Wow, that is such a contrasting colour, it is pretty. So, here you're my Heather Glen. I'm going to do a similar kind of dot. coffee bean because that coffee bean is yummy but I don't want to use too much of this because it is really just going to it's not going to pop the colour as much it's going to bring it down but let's do the same thing here So at this stage I'm thinking, wow, these colours really do complement the orange, the gold and the brown and they're really popping. I felt like I wasn't too sure what I was going to do. So you saw me bring out the heat gun, which is not something I use a great deal now because with colour cottage pigments they are beautiful. But what I find is if I use my heat gun, they blend together too much and I wanted to keep the vibrancy of each of those beautiful colours. So when I gave it the first blast of the heat gun, I was a bit worried but once it bled together and started to come back I was just in love with it and the blue the two blues together are just exquisite against this orange and this brown at this stage I'm still just experimenting I really don't have a preset idea all I knew is the colors and the tones I wanted to work with as they applied the brown the way through the blue I kind of thought it's hitting the spot on some aspects but not the others but don't panic just let it settle and see what happens to it and that's when I move over to the little one and start adding the colours I'm sorry it comes a little bit out of screen there but I'm just applying the tones there so at this stage I'm looking at how far the um, resin is bleeding out and I was a little bit worried that I'd eaten up too much of the orange and I still feel that I ended up with far less orange than I wanted to so I will go back and revisit a piece and try and keep more that texture and orange in a new piece but overall I'm loving the effects and my problem is know when to stop <laughs> with effects or applying the colour and try and leave that negative space at this stage this is where I'm just in the zone and my intuition just kicks in About here is where I am loving the colours but I just wanted to break down or experiment the harsh line around it and did it add any value if I broke it down so I got my fork and I'm just teasing it at the same time praying that I'm not ruining this and just seeing more what's going to happen and experimenting and you've got to do that with resin and I'm now bringing back my swirls because I wanted to protect um, the puddle that I'd created in the middle and I didn't want to muddy those colours up I felt that I needed to add that and I know that this is my go-to signature um, uh, but I stand by it. it's something that I felt added texture to this piece 
And I'm starting to sense that this is some kind of um, creature uh, floating or flying or swimming. Uh, just a feeling that I got almost one point like a broken butterfly. Um, but I'm starting to love it. But I'm trying in my head to balance, stop, look at what you're doing, pull back and seeing if you ruin it. Because you can sometimes just take it too far. And I think that it ended up being beautiful. As you can see now, while I'm letting my main piece settle down, cool down and just do its stuff, I move over to the small pieces and I'm wanting to keep a family feel to them. So I have a look at what I've got and then I start to sculpt but try and make it look as though it belongs in a set. Uh, really happy with how these little ones turned out and sometimes I practice more on the little ones and bring them over into the big ones. So they're all starting to get their own personalities or uh, that beautiful piece of art that looks like a family that belongs together. Well, I'm being brave here. I've left this at normal speed so you can see it, but I've got my popsicle stick and what I'm going to do is press down and drag across the colours, creating the smooth textures, but I wanted to see what happened the colours and how they would bleed into each other and would this produce any amazing effects. I tried that on the little piece just before and I really like that it was a bottom corner and so now what I'm thinking is how does that transfer over onto my main piece. Uh, so this is something that I enjoy doing and it is something that I am going to experiment with on some of my future pieces. I will use a palette knife because that does give me a big grip for it and my arm will be away from the artwork. <laughs> Okay, it's about now for me where I'm doing final checks, making sure it all looks level, making sure any obvious dust particles are removed and doing a final check for air bubbles. It's so important that you don't skip these stages. But for me, it's still an ongoing battle with making sure I've got a piece that's 100% dust free, even in a controlled environment. Uh, but never give up and keep trying. against the orange just pops so beautifully I just really hope they dry like that this is the one that looks like a little bit of a shell under the water it belongs to the mermaid and again another I think shell at the bottom of the mermaid ocean so maybe this is this is linked to um, the ocean of mermaid but I sometimes see a broken butterfly exquisite colours. Let's just hope this stays this way when they're cured. So I need to put them to bed before any more dust gets on them. Ciao, ciao. Hello, it is the morning. These are cured and I love them. I don't think the brightness um, is going to be captured on um, the video at this stage. I'm struggling with this beautiful sunshine coming in and glare um, but what I am contemplating and I know people have expressed the interest that they want to understand my decision making and that finds them helpful so what I am considering here is do I need to embellish at all I really feel that the colours on these pieces really are the hero so I don't want to distract from that however I'm going to have a play around to feel if I can add value to them and start with the smaller pieces before putting the glue on or anything like that but just see what it would look like and feel so this is my thought process I just want to go through and see does it add value am I happy with it if not remove it and stay as they are if they are I'll commit and go to it so I am probably going to start with um, this little shell here um, 
I'm going to move the big one out of the way so I can bring this close to me. You can see my workstation is still messy from last night, but I'm just going to centralise them so that I can see what's happening and get a feeling. So I love this piece. Um, I hope you can see this without the glare. It reminds me of a shell under the water, but it has a mermaid sort of feel to it um, from the colour schemes. And um, so I'm just going to see if what I can do with that one. And this one also reminds me of something under the water, like a, I see a shell, but it could be a sea urchin or a little bit of coral. So I'm contemplating, is the brown just going to blend in? Is it going to be subtle? Or is, is the iridescent going to win? So you'll see me try a few different things until I work out what, if anything, this should be. And I've got my sheet of paper ready to pour them into. So I'm going to start with my little bronze. And I'm just going to feed him up this way here. And see what I feel. Because I don't want to just add bling for adding bling's sake. I only want to do it if I feel it needs it and if I feel it's going to add a little bit of a feature or character. So that's subtle. I was thinking more of having a defined line. Um, that might go make it appear as though it is more of a creature. It just grips so much. Okay, so that works. Ooh. So that works. I think the blue is the hero here. So I don't need to do anything with that and how it hands over with that. Just one band there does add value. Just. Um, Like it when it goes that way. What I'm going to do now is just pop it back into my cup where I have excess of this and now I'm going to try it again with the iridescent colour. I might have to get my paintbrush because as you can see <laughs> it sticks to it. So I just want to gently scrape that off. You just have to um, almost brush it off because I don't want to scrape the resin. I'm just going to leave those little bits on there. Now I'm going to see if I was to add the iridescent one. I kind of feel though that this one would be the brown and the iridescent would be more on this one that I associate with a mermaid. So the iridescent one does not belong on that one. The bronze does. I have a feeling the iridescent one's going to go on that one because they're beautiful complementing. Is where would I put it on that one? I'm gonna put it on, probably on the spikes coming out. All right, so I am going to now I'm comfortable that that's gonna work. I'm gonna put my line of it's called Mixation Relief Ebo, but it's just like a glue. It needs to set for about an hour. But I'm trying not to touch this too much because even though it's hard to touch, it's not fully cured. But I'm now going to put a thin line roughly where I had it before that's going to complement this. I'm going to bring it up so it represents I think a body of a sea creature. And 
then you have to let this dry uh, and then just put the glitter on it. So he's got his body there and he's chugging along at the bottom of the ocean. I think he may See, I, I tell stories in my head that helps me uh, connect with the piece. So. So he's going to be my little sea creature body as he is gliding. It's telling this to come on in though. There you go. So why I'm thinking on this piece, because it's got such beautiful um, subtle oh dear. Um, pearlized colours coming through there. I'm going to see what would happen if I add something to there, but I want to keep this area protected. That's the hero. And I don't want to blank out those colours here, but I feel that the offshoots of the shell should have that pearlescent feeling. So before I commit to it, I am just going to add a little bit just to one because it's terrible to get off and see what do I feel as it added some magic to the piece and as I thought that colour is going to work beautifully there so it's probably a bit hard for you to see here but because it's pearl um, I want to say <laughs> pearlescent yeah so it reflects what colours underneath it and different colours um, I think that's going to work well just coming off the spokes so I think that will add value to it as well I think that will make it feel uh, more magical and more like it's underwater so what I'm going to do is remove that now just add very subtly up these spokes here just navigates into there and maybe just a tiny little blob in the middle there and that's it so again I just need to sweep that off back into the cup now what did I do with my paintbrush there it is <laughs> okay so side and then let me gently gently <laughs> pick this up and start working where this is going to be so it's definitely going to be at the end here and then scoop around to that there. and I'll just repeat that process In my head at the minute, what's going through my head is under the sea, under the sea, under the sea, under the sea. I don't know how your brain works when you're doing the creative process, but I tend to channel into whatever it is that I'm painting or in the zone of, so underwater. So of course I'm going to be thinking Little Mermaid. People that know me as well 
in real life will know that I think in song a lot. <laughs> what can I say? My world is just a musical. And I'm just following the ridges of blob at the end of them. The ridges of where I uh, work my resin. So sticking true to the original form. This is going to get interesting because there is no there is no line there, so I'm going to have to create one. You can see from the outline, that's the only thing I'm going to do, so it shouldn't really detract from what I think is a beautiful piece of art. Uh, and I'm just going to go a tiny little blob in the middle, just so it balances. Not that you have to have balance. Just checking if I'm happy, so I just want to pull that one back a little bit. great thing with this you can pull it back and manipulate it before it dries I'd like to pretend that the washing machine's me but that's my Neil it's more domesticated than me what can I say under the suit. See, still going on. Alright, put those back. And then, this one's going to take a lot of concentration because I really do not want to ruin this and I love the simplicity of the colour. Um, it's bold, it's striking, but I always look at this and think a uh, broken butterfly. So I'm wondering if I did something like that, would that turn it into a butterfly? Ah, I don't want to ruin it. Oh, the decisions. Let's just do this. Let's have a little look and wipe it off if it's not. It's very hard because I'm not going to put, I don't want to put too much on. These ones are new. This, I'm not too sure. In my head I'm just filling out the blanks, sorry, I'm just trying to see if I could create this body, or if it's just going to ruin it, but I definitely see a butterfly. Alright, so I'm just going to do this, and then wipe it off if not. Now I 
see just a flying creature, almost like a seahorse or a dragon. Before these dry off totally, I need to swap this back out. And actually, no, I'm going to put my iridescent on now. And then it will overspill over the edge, don't stress. Once it's dried, we'll be able to collect the rest of it back. But I just want it to cover. all the glue that I've just put down. Just get the excess off because I just don't want it to sink into the resin, even though it's hard to touch, it's not fully cured. It's just easy if you deal with some right now. I will have to go over this with a click or resin. I've got quite a bit of dust. Oh, I forgot my little got quite a bit of dust in here. I had a little bit of an accident. I received a call uh, when I was working on this, and then it had a domino effect. Not not necessarily the call, but I knocked my camera into my art salvage that but then in the process knock my light into the art so this poor little thing's had two foreign objects shoved in it and i had resin everywhere <laughs> i did swear a bit i will have to confess but everything ended good all got cleaned off oh i've put the wrong lid on the wrong glitter all right so i'm gonna run out of this soon but it's really really great this brand I like it because it's got different textures and different things in there, uh, as opposed to the normal glitter. I don't know if this is my version of geodes, because I've never really got into the geodes myself. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I seem to be adding a lot of glitter and bling on these. Alright, so bring this one back, and then I'll come back in an hour and I'll remove the excess, and I'll show you how I do that. So hopefully you'll learn. And oh gosh, I forgot that I've got to use the iridescent on this one. I hope we've got enough left. Ooh, Ooh the excitement.
Alright, it's just a waiting game now. Okay, so I hope you're going to be able to hear me okay. I've got somebody that's doing gardening at home. I've just cleared um, the workstation underneath so that when I am going to recycle and reuse these bits of glitter, there's going to be no dust or particles in there. Um, I'm hoping that this has been long enough now so it's cured. Made myself a cup of tea, put the dishwasher on, hung out some washing, doing my domestic bits. But let's have a little look. So I'm going to start with um, this seashell one. So I'm just going to gently, hopefully you'll be able to see it, shake the bits off there on that clean piece of paper. And then I'm going to slowly dust around the area where I know that I never put any of the glue. Because I don't want to knock it too much, but I am just trying to define it now. So it's quite quite nice when you're doing this really therapeutic so I will fast forward me going through this but all you can see is this is the process that I use and I'm collecting all that um, glitter down there that I can reuse and the reason I use the brush I will go with an alcohol wipe because by using the brush I can gently knock it off the resin without scratching it and those little bits of brush get underneath it and then I'll come around with an alcohol wipe just to remove any of the excess pieces. So. And you know what? If you do it early enough where it is stuck and if you don't like anything, you can scrape it off as you saw me do on my peacock. if you'll see in here but how pretty and sparkly does that cup look and let's see what appears from here and hopefully I have not ruined this beautiful piece I love about this iridescent is some's pink some's blue some's green and it's blended in to the area so I'm just going to come in now with my alcohol wipe and clean off some of this excess so you got that in a shot where you can see this
Sorry, I've been served a sandwich in between, which is brilliant. <laughs> but you get the feeling. He is amazing. All right. So I just need to let him dry a little bit now. Um, then I'll come back through some alcohol wipe hair there. And as the bits dry, so I will have to go back through this with another very thin coat of resin, but that's mainly because there was a lot of dust particles in here, in my controlled environment, but I did have the door open last night. Um, so I'll have to do that and I'll, um, yeah, but I love, love this. So I wanted to show you these pieces. I've just finished working on the embellishment and I'm hoping you can hear me over my Neil singing, but I'm in love with these. I know it's not going to be to everybody's taste and I think I might be slightly addicted to the embellishment and I really love these pieces as they were, but then I've sat and sat and thought about it and I have to be true to myself and when I was in the shadow. They, to me, have an underwater or mystical feel, like they're from another world, and I just felt like I needed to finish them off so that I was happy. Now, they're all going to need a last coat of resin, and on this one here, I don't know if I just need to bring some blue things that stretch out from these pieces that connect him to his wing, but I'm in love with them. <laughs> and I'm going to take you in, and I'm hoping that this light is going to give you enough vibrancy, because this is like an electric blue. And when you see it in person, it's just stunning. So I'm going to go down to the big one here. So this is the one where I kept feeling it's something that's flying and movement. And the colours with the base background, which was the orange and gold. I was hoping I would have left a little bit more blue, but my problem is knowing when to stop adding the resin. But there's a few techniques that I really want to enjoy and practice more, which was uh, getting a palette knife and flattening it and bringing it out. And these little um, movements at the edge really love that but I'm gonna see if I can move this so you can get the um, the pure I think that really shows you the tones um, of the color a lot better it's just divine and I see some uh, spiritual creature delivering messages to people and going around so along the avatar feel i originally went in there wanting it to be something like aladdin and it's nothing to do with aladdin other than uh, i absolutely love the color so i'll take it down and around so this is using that iridescent glitter and originally i was trying to think is he a butterfly but it's not really a butterfly it's just out of this world creature uh, but overall i just think it's a really happy piece and i hope you enjoy it I am going to try and do a similar piece, but try and create a butterfly next time and try and do that without embellishments. But let's see, see how that goes. But I feel that this has added value. I was a little bit nervous about it, but I'm really proud of it and I stand by my art. So I'm going to move you over to this little cute one that reminded me of a shell under the water. And I use that little swipey uh, motion here. And you might not be able to pick, but it's got lovely sort of pearlescent uh cool Ooh, look at that light there uh sorry i've got these two big lights behind me now which neil bought me for my birthday which are great but in the wrong angle it's just glaring but you get to see the exquisite colors and the only embellishment i did here was on these parts that came out i kept them iridescent but then uh faded it through a little bit with a blonde blonde bronze um and I think this is just amazing. So they they both feel like they belong underwater, but in such as a place like Avatar or mermaid and unicorns. And this little piece here is just so cute. So here was the leftover last bits that I used and it felt like it was a shell or coral coming up and I like that movement. But then as I looked at the embellishment, um, I see a kind of little sea creature here as well. And that's his big, uh, fan or wings coming down here you can just see it's, it's really just a deep blue and there's the bronze that you can see all the way through and a little bit of purple uh, and that's where I swiped again at the bottom and created that really nice pearlescent feeling so I'm going to see if I can hold this one up a bit better to the light 
Oh, look at that blue there. Yeah, that's captured it beautifully, hasn't it? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Here's me just admiring the colours there and really happy with that. So I would love to know what you think of these three pieces. Um, I do have to go over them all again with a clear resin. A lot of dust particles landed in that. And because I've been doing a lot of embellishment, I've just scuffed the surface a little bit. But I'd love to know, what do you see and feel? What do you think to um, the embellishments? I know they're not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, but I just want to know what you think and feel and if you're going to give anything like this a go. But remember, if you like my art, remember, thumbs up, subscribe and share. And comments are always welcome. I want you to have the most magical day. And remember to use colour and your imagination in your art. And stand by your art and be proud of your achievements. So just a little confession, between making the video and sleeping on it, on the very big piece where I added those little bit of the bonds, I stripped that back just so it is purely the iridescence and to me it just looks more angelic and it brings it back to where it would be. I'd love to hear your opinion on whether you feel I should have left that on or not. But anyway, I'm out of here and have an amazing day.